Corpus Christi, and uh, have, have been in the marketing space for over 10 years now, have been uh, partnered with Certified Lights for a few of those years. And um, really, if I say anything, I've worked with people from across the board, from home service businesses to best-selling authors to HVAC and anywhere in between. And if I just say I had a expertise, it would really be in strategy, marketing strategy, and in advertising for local companies. So what my goal is for today is to really, my goal here is to give you guys a system that you can take and you can put in your business no matter what uh, size you are, whether you're starting out or you've been in the business for a while, something that uh, you can kind of scale and you don't have to put a lot of time into once you get it set up. So think of it kind of like a water faucet where it's, you can kind of turn it on if you're just getting started and you can kind of get a little bit going, get some new customers in, get things flowing. And then as your business grows, you can dial these systems in and crank them up and scale them. Okay. So my goal is at the end, you have all this knowledge and this power that you can just open up a floodgate of new leads and customers into your holiday lightings business. So uh, we've already kind of covered this, but real quick that we have a recording of this. It will be posted. Um, so really just, you know, pay attention, participate, use the chat, ask the questions and uh, get the most out of it that way. So with all that said, we'll go ahead and get into it. So before we get into the, the advertising and marketing side of it, we really want to build a foundation. So we're going to cover some basics first. Uh, really spending the time to kind of think through this stuff will make the marketing part and the promoting part and the advertising part a heck of a lot easier. So we're just going to take some time to go through it real quick, uh, real fast. You can take notes. Um, but once you get these building blocks in place, then you'll see how they all fit into the marketing when we get to that part. So if you're just starting out, first thing you really need to pay attention to is, is developing your target market. And this might be something that even if you're an experienced installer, you're going to want to revisit from time to time just because it's very easy for us to get off on to chasing other customers that may not be our best customer. So we really want to think about what locations that we're focused on, suburbs, neighborhoods, things like that. Do we want to focus on affluent houses and uh, customers? or middle class, something like that. We can focus on household income or we can focus on residential or commercial. So you kind of want to think about those things because your strategies will vary depending on what you're, who you're focusing on. And it's also very tempting to try to go after every customer and then your operations processes are kind of get changed up and you lose efficiencies and things like that. So spending the time to really think through this and revisit it from time to time to see if you're still on track or if you're getting distracted is going to be very important. Also, you want to think through each year what is going to be like your initial budget for that season. So what we recommend in general is to kind of think through what is five to 10% of what your revenue goal would be for that season. So if you are shooting for 100000 and revenue, then you want to think through five to 10,000 in advertising spend. Now, you may not need that right at the initial, uh, you know, start of the season. As you get income going, you may, you know, add to that. Um, also, as your business grows, you'll find that a kind of snowball effect happens where you may not need as much of a budget because you have the customers build up every year and then you, uh, you know, as people see your signage and referrals and all that starts to pick up as your business gets going. So then you're, if you're experienced, your budget might be a little bit less than that. But there's something you want to think through saying, hey, I'm going to allocate this. I'm going to invest this in marketing and invest this in growing my business and, and just know that that's what it's for and, and not be stingy about that. And then from there, you can kind of scale up or scale down. If things work out really good, you have some good strategies, business takes off, then you can you know, take your foot off the gas. If it's not quite working and you need to tune, you know, crank it up a little bit or you get going and you just want to, you know, push it as hard as you can, then you can scale it up. Okay. Um, if you're new also, you want to research some of your competitors. What are they doing? How are they marketing? What their pricing is? If you can figure that out, offers, things like that. Any information that you can get is very helpful. So you know what it helps you one, 
understand your market a little bit, but you can also understand how to structure your offers uh, to be competitive. Another great tool for that is if you, this is a, a kind of a hat trick, but if you go to facebook.com slash ads slash library, it will pretty much pull up the ads library for everybody in uh, Facebook who's running ads on Facebook or Instagram. And you can type in your competitors or you can just type in Christmas light installation. You can see what other people are advertising. So it gets you an idea of, of you know, ways that you can change up your ads or if you're new and you're trying to figure out what to do, that's a good, good way, a uh, good tool to use. Um, also, we're going to cover a lot of strategies here. So I don't want you guys, especially if you're starting out, don't try to implement all of them. Focus on two or three core strategies and then focus on implementing that in your business. So if you're new, it might look like something like Facebook ads plus flyers plus maybe yard signs. If you're established, you might have already been doing some of those. So maybe you want to upgrade to like postcards, maybe still run ads, have your team sit out you know, hand out door hangers and then maybe start wrapping your trucks or something like that. And we want to have our marketing ready to go going into October. Okay. And if you're an established business, you've been in here, you've been in business a while, you're probably going to need to be ready to go before that. And then you want to think about your conversion mechanism. So you can market all day long, but when those leads start coming in, if you're not focus on converting them on the sales pipeline, how you're going to follow up with them, then you're going to waste a lot of time and a lot of money on marketing. So you want to think through that. You want to think about your website. And we'll talk a little bit about your website here. But a lot of these conversion mechanisms um, are part of your sales process, which um, we'll talk about next month. But you want to think about your, your Google business profile, which is used to be called Google My Business. But you want to let Google know that you're in business, that you're there, um, have your website ready to go, social media profiles created and, and pictures and information on there. So when you start running ads, when you start marketing, the like wherever you're sending people, that information and everything is ready to go to convert them. And then have you know your phone call scripts and text scripts and everything that you're going to follow up with have all that ready to go. Ashley's going to talk about that next week, the sales process. So a quick little plug next month, or sorry, I said next week, but next month, our August webinar is going to be on uh, Christmas light installation sales. So we're going to talk about the marketing side this month. Next month, we're going to talk about conversion and sales and how we do that for our own company. So with that said, let's start getting into it. The first thing that we're really going to focus on is our ad building block. So we're going to talk about the anatomy of what actually makes a decent ad. And for the Christmas light industry, it's not super complicated. So we're going to go through, you can literally take notes on this and you're going to see how we put this together in our ad. So first thing we want to think about is your offer. What kind of pricing discount when you're in this, and we're talking about the offer inside of your ad. So you don't have to actually have your pricing figured out, but sometimes you might start, if you're advertising, you might list a starting price in your ad. So maybe your, your installs are starting at 750 or starting at 1500. If you're high end, I think ours start at 1500 right now. So that's the minimum we'll do. Okay. So you might want to put that in your ad. So you don't have people that are tire kickers that are expecting you to install a $5,000 job, you know, for 1500 bucks. So you might so think about that. If you want to put down your ad, if you're just starting out, you might not. You might be open to negotiation or changing up your prices, but um, you want to think about that. Also, if you want to offer early bird discount, usually a 20 or 30 percent early bird discount is what we kind of see and uh, works really well. Free quote to mention free quote. And then you can also add scarcity in there. So limited time book by November 1st um, or by Thanksgiving that sort of thing. And then towards the end of the season, if as your marketing ships, or like we start to fill up, then let them know like, hey, we're almost booked out. We're down to like, we've, we've only got two weeks open. Now's the time to book, that sort of thing. Then talk about 
the benefits of the convenience, holiday lighting made easy, let us do the dangerous work for you. Um, sit back, relax, have a cocktail, play with your kids, that sort of thing, have the best lit home in the neighborhoods for so you're kind of hitting on status there. And then you can kind of combine those to so get the best lit home in the neighborhood without the hassle. So that's status, best lit house, and convenience. And then if you want to offer any kind of risk reversal, so any kind of guarantees, um, let them know that you are insured so that their property is going to be protected. Those are all big to mention in your marketing as well. And you'll see how this all comes together in just a minute. Also, it's, it's important to mention your process. A lot of people don't understand. They've never bought Christmas lights or had the Christmas lights installed. So they're they're unaware of what steps are going to take. So mentioning that in your marketing can really help. So let them know like, hey, first you're going to get a free quote. Then you're going to choose your design. Then we're going to install it. We're going to have maintenance and a season takedown and storage. Or whatever it is that you offer if you do something different than that. So those are kind of working on your offer. This is more of like the copy of how, how that all comes together. So some substitutes that you can use, Christmas lights, holiday lights, Christmas holiday, you can, interchangeable. You don't have to get the perfect word. You can try out different words and just switch it up a little bit. Service, installation, professional, commercial versus custom, dollars off versus percentage off. So some of your, some of your advertising you might say a percentage off, some of you might say 250 bucks off, that kind of thing. Uh, homeowners versus residents. It's all just language that you can change out. So headlines in your advertising, headlines in your on your postcards, your um, uh, yard signs, you know, your, your wraps on your truck. Um, these work really well. We see these work really well and around the entire industry. So Christmas or holiday light services light installation, uh, $200 off, um, a headline, a good headline for Facebook ads is like attention, whatever market you're in. So attention Dallas homeowners works really well to just grab the attention of that market. Um, so you, you kind of get the, the picture there. So when we put it all together, you can kind of see how we put this all together in an ad. So we'll have the headline and call out attention Dallas homeowners and on social media, you can test out different emojis, Santa face, um, Christmas tree, snowflake, that sort of thing. But get custom Christmas light installation for your home. Certified Lights is now serving the North Dallas area, Plano, Frisco. So call out each area. So if you're in a metropolitan area, call out the suburbs and the other cities around there. Let them know exactly. So don't, don't expect them, if you say DFW or Dallas, that if someone in Fresco is going to expect you to work like tell them don't don't just assume that they're gonna know that okay uh and then go on to like list out your benefits and everything so sit back relax let us do the dangerous work for you holiday lighting made easy the certified lights get a free quote now so you can mix and match take those building blocks you can put them together and add like that so that's kind of the foundation that's the copy as you as we go through these examples and we start to show these different strategies you'll see that same copy and those same building blocks that will go into all your ads. So what I like to do is just sit down, you do that on a piece of paper, just like you saw through the slides there. And then when you go build out your advertising, you don't have to sit there and go like, what do I put on the advertising? What do I tell the printers to print? You, you already have the building blocks right there. Somebody's taking the camera zooming in on them sitting out there. All right, so next we're gonna get into digital marketing strategies first, and then we'll follow up with some traditional. So the first thing is we're going to talk about search takeover. So this is all about being the first to show up to people when they're searching for holiday light installation on, uh, on search engines. So on Google. So what's the first thing? If they're actually looking for a holiday light installation, most people go to their phone, they go to the computer, they search for it on Google. So we want to be the first to show up on there. This may not necessarily be a strategy if you're year one. But definitely if you're an installed, um, experienced installer, sorry. So what most companies do is they don't do anything about that. They just kind of leave it up to Google, let them decide, you know, where they're going to fall in the rankings. But what we can actually do is we can actually go to Google and say, hey, when someone types in Christmas lights or Christmas light installation, 
and they live in my area, my service area, go ahead and put me at the top of Google and we can pay Google for clicks to do that. Okay. So Google will put you at the top of that. You also notice that there was a map there. We can tell Google to go ahead and put us at the top of that map as well. So through this strategy, all it is is ads.google.com is where you can start that and sign up for that. But you tell, you just fill out your information on your business, let them know your service area and what you offer, and then they will put you at the top. So this is a really good strategy for uh, metropolitan areas um, and, and, and experienced installers. So some of the advantage of this is you are getting in front of people who are already looking for what you offer. These people are already going to Google. They're looking for Christmas light installation. It's a very qualified hot lead. Um, so it's, it's one of the better strategies out there if you actually get them on the phone whenever they, they actually call you. So, and the other thing about it is you pay only when someone clicks on your ad. So a lot of times when you do advertising, you're paying for impressions, uh, you're paying for signage, you're not guaranteed to get clicks or to get any kind of response. So there's a little bit of built-in en engagement there. So a couple of things to consider though. Um, the name of the game is you got to get your prospects on the phone ASAP. So when someone calls your business or they message your business or fill out a form on your website, you got to call them and get them on the phone. If they're actively looking for Christmas light installers and they call you and you don't call them back, they're just on to the next one. Okay. Uh, the other thing to consider is Google traffic might be limited depending on your location. If you're in a smaller city, um, 100,000, 200,000, there's only so many people that are going to be searching for Christmas light installation versus DFW, Houston, a big metropolitan area where there's millions of people um, who would have a lot of people looking for Christmas light installation. So something to consider there. Um, so that's search takeover. So that's the first digital strategy. Second one is targeted social media. So uh, compared to traditional media, digital marketing really allows us to get narrow and really focus on our target market. You do have a little bit of control with, with traditional media, but you'll see here how you can get really focused on, on dialing into your, your target market. So the first thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at Facebook ads. Uh, it's the world's number one social platform right now for the moment. Facebook also owns Instagram. So through one advertising platform, we can hit the majority of social media users. Um, we are testing some other platforms, but by far, this is still the most effective. And one of the reasons is because Facebook knows everything about you. They know uh, your demographics, where you live, location, your interests, your hobbies, your income, or they have a good idea about your income household, where you, and I said, where you live. And then if you're a business owner status, whatever you put on your profile, they can, we can target that in our social media ads. So for example, if we wanted to target somebody, um, say in an affluent neighborhood, we could target ages 30 plus, upper 10% income, and people who live in specific areas. So we can type in cities, towns, we can even drop a pin on a neighborhood and dial it into a one to two mile radius to focus just on that neighborhood and people who live in that area who have a, a upper income. Um, so you can, you can kind of see how we can get really dialed in. If we wanted to focus on more of like commercial leads, then we might spread out that geographical area and then just focus on business owners and target all business owners in that area. So business owners, operators, managers, uh, we could target people who operate business Facebook pages. So we can kind of guess that they're probably the owner if they own that Facebook page. Um, so we can get really dialed in to targeting those people and, and getting in front of them on their phone, on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. So you can kind of see the difference, how we can, we can start to really narrow in and, and home in on our target market. So some ads, um, we're, we'll go through some points on the ads, but just showing your work, calling them out. You can see in these ads, we're just calling out um, our target market. We're giving them offers, all the copy and the building blocks we do. That's what we're throwing inside of our ads. See some more examples. You can show off your work, show off your 
if you're really good at wrapping trees or you have something unique, if you're in the commercial space and you have certain displays, you can show all that off in your ads. So to talk a little bit about the creatives for, for these ads, so creative is image, graphics, videos, that sort of thing. Um, like I said, show your work. So if you got pictures, show your pictures. Uh, if you're just starting out, um, we'll talk a little bit about our partner program later that's free to join, but you'll have access to some of our pictures that you can use in your marketing to get yourself going. And then once you get your own pictures, then you can trade those up. Um, but show your work and then be sure to match the type of target market that you're focusing on. So if you're looking at a fluent neighborhood, then use pictures of nice houses. Don't use a $250,000 house picture if you're targeting million dollar houses and vice versa, okay? Um, also use multiple images. Don't use the same one over and over. When you set up a Facebook ad, it gives you the opportunity to put multiple images in there so you're not showing them the same thing. Um, so go ahead and take advantage of that and use multiple images. And then the other thing is don't overthink it. Christmas, heart, uh, Christmas lights, like I said, is not super hard to sell or in, in market. Um, so just be clear and just make sure you're using high resolution images. So if your pictures are blurry, just get better, better pictures. In most cases nowadays, your smartphones take really good pictures. So um, if you have to go back, get another picture and, and, and use that instead. Formatting wise, uh, Instagram is a square image, eight, uh, 1080 by 1080 and Facebook is 740 by 788. Nowadays you can just upload any image and they'll crop it for you. So uh, that's, that's not as relevant, but if you wanna get high quality images from a professional, then, uh, then that would be the formatting size. Uh, graphics, so graphics, again, show your work, match the type, everything we just mentioned there, but in these graphics, you can take what you would use on your postcards and, and your flyers and add that inside of your graphics along with the images, um, free quote, your discount, early bird special, all of that good stuff. Um, and a good resource for this, if you want to do this on your own, is called Canva.com. It's a free, um, it's a free design software that you can use. Has lots of templates in there, and uh, you can kind of look through and and edit things and create your own graphics if you want to. Uh, videos. So videos that work well. Well, again, show your work, master type, everything we just mentioned. These are. Uh, um, some that we've created in our partnership program for our partners um, that work across multiple industries. Um, they're kind of on the cheesy side. We've tested cheesy, we've tested super clean, both work really well. So it's just kind of what your business personality is, like kind of what you want your business, who you're focused on. That's, you'll just kind of tailor your, your ads for that. So a quick example, I'm gonna try to play these if it'll play. And that's all it is. It's super simple, but because it's a video, it, it, the algorithm gives it a lot more favor. Um, that sort of thing. This is a little bit more cheesy. It's a dance in Santa. Play. You guys have probably seen some of these and some of our ads for the marketing webinar. These are just things we test out and they work really well. We, I've, I've seen partners and I've helped partners use these in multiple uh, markets from Florida to Texas to Iowa and everywhere in between. They work really well. People like them. They're fun. And um, so it's just something you can use too. So that's in our partnership program. We'll talk about that later, but um, it's all available for there. There's some more examples of those. Um, if you, I don't know where you created these, it's been a long time, but um, there are some that you can create on your own if you want to try that. So that's targeted social media. It's all about getting in front of your target post, uh, ideal customers on social. Uh, next, we're going to talk about retargeting. This is like one of my favorite ones as a marketer. Uh, I like to call this the vortex, but this is all about becoming omnipresent and just kind of taking over your entire market. So when someone comes to your, your website, they might see your website, but Christmas lights is, is a bigger purchase for most people. It's something they don't just make impulsively. So a lot of times they're going to think about it, um, that sort of thing. So what we want to do is 
is we want to stay in front of them over the course of several days to weeks to remind them of our offer and our services so um, that when they are time to make that decision, they've seen our brand, they've seen our ads, and, and they're thinking of us. And we do that through a strategy called retargeting. The way it works is we just install a pixel on your website. And what that does is anytime someone comes to your website, it tags the device that they're on. So if they're on their cell phone, computer, laptop, it will essentially put a cookie on that device. And when that person or that whoever's on that computer goes back to Facebook, then uh, Facebook says, hey, this person went to your website. Do you want us to show them another, yet, another ad? And like, yes, we do. So that's the way we kind of follow them around. So they go back to Facebook. We, they can see more of our ads. We're staying in front of them. Instagram, same thing. They see our ads again there. We can show off different images. Again, you're using multiple images. Um, so they're seeing different ads, parts of your work. We can even do this through the Google Display Network. So when someone goes to like Fox News or CNN or there's millions of other websites that, that run Google ads, we can show up. So if you ever like, shop for something and you Google something, then you see ads for that thing everywhere you go. That's what this strategy is called retargeting. So you can kind of see how this is. We're getting really dialed in and we're staying in front of that, that person versus just blasting out an ad or a sign, hoping that the right person sees it. Um, so again, I love this. It's like your own little internet salesman following people around the, the internet. So that's retargeting. So digital marketing strategies, we covered uh, Google search, targeted social media, retargeting. To go over your website real quick, we're going to go through this quick because we're kind of running out of time. Um, we got a lot more to go, but <clears throat> a couple of things, uh, some do's and don'ts. Do's, keep it very simple. Um, you don't need a super complex site. You don't need 20 pages, all these different things, unless you're getting really focused on SEO, which is really hard to do. Um, and we have a partner in our uh, lead gen program that has done a lot of the legwork for us. And I'll talk about that later, but just keep it simple. Some people do, uh, we see a lot of partners do really good with the simple two page website, the one page with the services and an opt-in page for them to get your information, request a quote and like a thank you page in with next steps. Okay. So just be clear, let them know um, a call to action, like what you want them to do and make sure your site is also mobile friendly. So pretty much the majority of your customers nowadays, they're going to come to your site on their phone. So if you're, you know, as a business owner, you're probably on the computer laptop a lot doing things. You, you might be looking at your site that way, but anytime you do something, make sure that you also check it out on mobile. Because the last thing you want is to have a pretty site on desktop, but everybody goes to your site on mobile and it looks like crap there. Okay. So think about that. Other thing is don't over, over complicate it. So some don'ts. Uh, don't worry about too many details, especially about yourself. Don't spend too much time talking about yourself unless it's relevant to it. So if you're targeting commercial um, municipalities, things like that, then you might want to be talking about your experience and, and, and all of that stuff. But in general, most people just want to see the end result. So show lots of pictures, show your work, talk about what their experience is going to be like and how they can get going. Um, so real quick, what you'll see is when you're actually on your phone and you go to a website or when you go to... Uh, a website on a laptop or computer, the initial landing page of what you see on that initial landing page before you start scrolling, that's called above the fold. It's, it's a reference to newspaper advertising of what goes above the fold when the newspaper is sitting there and people see it in a newspaper stand. So really, that's where the most important, it's very important what you do with the top of your website. So let them know who you are with your logo, uh, what services you offer and then how they can get started. So a lot of times you want to have a button at the top of your page so that people can just get started right away um, in, a, in a call to action. Real quick. And we'll give you, we'll go through a quick example of what this looks like. Um, and then below that, then you can kind of, then you can introduce yourself, describe your process, give them your results and testimonials, any FAQs that they, that you might gather over over time, and then your contact information at the bottom. And again, be sure to have buttons and call to actions throughout. Get started now. And we'll kind of look at an example right here. 
I have a control bar that's in my way. So this is a, a very example of a, of a one page website that works really well. Our partners use this same template. Uh, this is something that we've looked at tons of other uh, Christmas light installers and throughout the nation of what works really well. And we've kind of compiled them all into kind of like the perfect landing page for a, a website. Um, but anyways, first thing above the fold, have pictures of your work here. Um, Again, you can use the headlines, attention, call out your target market, holiday lighting services, Christmas light installation services, professional Christmas lights, all of that stuff. Have a button and your phone number there. They should be able on a mobile phone, they should be able to click that and call you right away. And then the button will have an opt-in form. Let them know about yourself. Give them your steps and processes, okay? So we have a custom quote and design and quote. You pick your favorite option, professional install, Step four, season long maintenance, professional removal and storage. So they know what those processes look like whenever they're going to engage with you. Show your work. And again, for our partners, we have our own images in there if you're getting started that you can just use for your own. And then as you accumulate, you can trade them out and you, and you have your own images in there. Again, buttons throughout, call to actions, get started now. Frequently asked questions. Hey, what happens if a light goes out? Tell them about your maintenance. Uh, do I have to be there for the installation or takedown? What if some, you know, do I have to turn my lights on every night? Just those are kind of frequently asked questions that people are going to have kind of going through this process if they haven't done it before. So go ahead and just let them know. And again, button on your website and then your contact information at the bottom of the page. So those are the digital marketing strategies. <clears throat> Uh, moving on to the traditional side of things, um, we're going to show you some templates here and examples. But um, again, these are strategies that can be scaled up and down, and you'll kind of see how that evolves over time. We'll talk about those. So uh, first one, if you're starting out, yard signs work pretty good. This is also They're also known as bandit signs. Um, if you some of you older business guys know them as bandit, bandit signs. But um, they work really well. You can put them outside neighborhoods. If you have friends, family, and neighborhood you want, as you get customers, asking them if you can put them in your neighborhood work really well. Um, this is an example of a partners of ours that has uh, used this simple sign that just says Christmas lights and has a phone number under it. Uh, last year did really well, put it outside neighborhoods on corners, uh, wherever he was allowed to put them. And uh, it did really well for him there. Um, so, Great strategy to start out with. Um, it's also one to kind of keep going as you have customers, just ask them if you can put them in their, in their yard. What you'll know is as, you're, as you do more houses than neighbors and people are going to be interested in getting their, um, their lights installed on their house as well. So they're going to, they're going to, you'll kind of see that take off as the season goes. So uh, one of the ways you can get that is through dirtcheapsigns.com. Um, and they have a, a lot of great examples. We are actually just started, created a partnership with them through our partnership program. So um, any of our partners can get signs at a discounted rate through them. Uh, but they have a lot of different templates and stuff to choose from. Again, keep it very simple for these signs. You, you, because they're so small on the side of the road, you don't want to put a lot of stuff on it just because people won't be able to read everything. So keep it simple. Christmas lights, put a number up. And, uh, and do that. So this is dirtcheapsigns.com. Um, next one is flyers. So another good strategy to, to get started with is flyers. Um, you can print up a bunch of flyers for, for very cheap and you can go just boots on the ground, tag in doors, tape them on doors. Um, don't open and put them in anybody's mailboxes, that's illegal. So tape it, put it on doors, uh, you can tape it on doorknobs. Um, that sort of thing works just like a door hanger. Um, but again, you can see on the ad, it's everything that we talked about in the building block section. So we're making discounts, offers. Um, how do they contact us? We're showing our work with our images. We're walking them through our process, step one, step two, step three. Uh, any kind of guarantees that you want to make, let them know that you're insured, all of that good stuff. Okay, and then we're talking about convenience and status in that as well. 
Okay, so this is kind of more of a classic version that we've used works really well. You can duplicate these as, as door hangers and also as postcards. Okay, also door hangers. Door hangers are probably one of my favorite for people that are, are starting out just because um, they're, it's very clean and just putting them on doors is really easy. Uh, but same thing, you can see the same information. This is one, an example of one of our partners uh, worked really well in the Houston area. Um, but you can see step one, step two, Christmas light services, holiday lighting made easy, contact for a free quote, and, um, and uh, contact information. Okay, um, if, you're, if you're an uh, experienced company and you're not going to be like tagging doors and stuff, one of the things that we used to do is we used to have, we leave door hangers with our crew and part of the checklist is if, as they're installing and they're checking off and finishing up a house, they had to go put a door hanger on the five houses around the one they just installed. Okay, so if you're an advanced company, you want to think more along those lines. Uh, your experience is like you, you don't want your your guys are out installing lights and you're investing in heavily in marketing and postcards and like advertising that's um, kind of automated. So this is uh, just a system, a way that you would use door hangers to just kind of give a little boost and, and let the neighbors know around uh, your customers, like who installed those lights. Postcards. Postcards are another one. Um, for uh, as you as your business grows, like I mentioned, you're not going to want to spend the time walking around and put handing out flyers and passing that out. You're going to want to offload. This is where you upgrade that strategy to where you start to send postcards to uh, neighborhood markets areas, and you can do that through what's called every door direct mail. And um, so the the way that works is you can kind of select certain areas and neighborhoods and even get into like kind of like income ranges and stuff like that and then send postcards a postcard campaign to them through that and then that's more hands off for you and, and you know you're busy installing and working on operations and that's every door direct mail is just sending out a postcard campaign for it. but same thing you see the copy everything that we talked about in the building blocks of an ad your offer, you may want to list, you know, again, a starting price, a minimum price to get started. Um, benefits, contact information. These are some that we've used in the past that worked really, really well for us. So you can just kind of see very classic. Um, all the, all the, I mean, everything that we just talked about, Bing Box, just plug it in. So it doesn't have to be super complicated. Um, and again, these are the same things that you can convert to door hangers if you're, if you're doing multiple strategies then you can kind of keep the look and feel consistency, you know, across those different strategies. So that's something that as your business grows, you're going to start to, to, to move into. Uh, also, as you grow, then you might want to invest in wrapping trucks, trailers, things like that. Because uh, where we are now, we don't spend a ton of time doing a lot of the boots on the ground marketing. Um, we really do very little marketing at this point because We've kind of, as you grow, you're going to have this snowball effect where people are seeing your trailers, your customers start talking, you get the referrals, um, all of that sort of thing. We've had, we have tons of new customers come up to us because they've seen our trailer. They ask them to get more information and we just have a flyer there. They can get information there. Or they just take a picture of the, the wrap of the trailer and call us from there. So uh, again, as you grow, that's something that, that you want to invest in. If you're just starting out, it's probably not worth it, um, except if you wanted to get maybe a magnet that you might put on your door, that would be a lot cheaper, more feasible for someone who's just getting started. And then another thing we do now is we have all of our guys wear vests, um, but having apparel, vests, shirts, hats, jackets, this, so that people see your logo. It looks very professional, but they can see your logo um, and it's just nice and clean. And we've had a lot of people that they've seen us with those vests versus other companies that they just look like a bunch of random guys out there fitting a roof line um, and have picked us over them. So uh, great, something something to think about as you get going or even as you get started making a few t-shirts and, and wearing those consistently. So that's the traditional side of things. Uh, to recap, 
So we covered a lot of information to recap. We talked about the foundation, defining your target market. Um, we talked about the anatomy of an ad, what the building blocks are. Once you fill that out, then everything else we just went through, all the flyers, the brochures, you're just plugging and playing. Just put those in there. Um, customer research, competitor, or, uh, sorry, competitor research if you're a new installer. Get your conversion mechanisms locked down so that whenever leads come in, this is the biggest, one of the biggest killers to your marketing campaigns that we see is that people do not have their sales process figured out, which we're going to talk about next month with Ashley, but they don't have that process figured out. So they invest in marketing, the leads come in and they don't follow up with them and they lose them or they mishandle them, whatever, whatever the reason is, they, they don't have that part figured out or they're not serious about it and it just kills their marketing budget okay so make sure you have that figured out and then figure out your initial marketing budget what you're going to go into this season with um <clears throat> digital market side we talked about search advertising being the first to show up on google you don't have to be the best at seo um, you can just tell google hey when somebody types in christmas lights and they're in our service area put us at the top of the page and they'll put you at the top of the page as well as the search map. We talked about targeted social media, how to show up in front of your target customers on Facebook, Instagram. We can get laser focused on where they live, uh, their income, if they're a business owner, all of that good stuff. And we can target them there as, as well as retargeting. So once people show up and, and they engage with us, they go to our website, we can follow them around the internet, reminding them of um our services we can show off in this campaign we can show off different um different things we offer we can give them like a variety of like show how we wrap trees all of that good stuff and then we talked about your website wireframe what you need on it um again don't overcomplicate that keep that simple and and tell them to where to get started and then in traditional marketing, we talked about postcards, every door direct as you get going and you're passing out flyers and your business grows, then at a certain point, like you're going to want to invest in postcards. So you're not spending and paying for guys to go out there and market and or you're not out there marketing yourself. Get those campaigns set up, target those neighborhoods, send out two or three, um, you know, every two or three weeks going through and then make sure you have your conversion mechanisms. So somebody's following up and sending them quotes and, and giving them designs. But if you're starting out, print up some flyers, print up some flyers, tag doors. You can do door hangers. Uh, I prefer door hangers, but both work really well. Yard signs, ask your customers to put yard signs um, in, in their yard. Um, if you're starting early, a little tip, if you're starting out and you start installing early, um, put their yard signs like in a mulch bed or something like that where it's not in the grass and it's getting mowed over or knocked over when the lawn company comes through. So. Um, just a little tip there. Um, and then as you advance, you think about wrapping your trailers, your trucks, trailers. Like right now, we we don't do much marketing and we still grow at a 20 to 30 percent clip because of like our trucks, our trucks are wrapped, trailers are wrapped, and then our customers are referring and, and sending in referrals that way. So that that's something that you'll see as you grow. It's kind of like this flywheel effect where it snowballs and, and you'll see that kind of take on. And then uniforms, you know, make sure you're wearing shirts, vests that have your logo on it. Look clean, professional. That's one of those big things that kind of sets you apart that you're just, you know, you're not some random group of guys fitting a roof line or throwing up Christmas lights. You're professional and people, people care about that stuff. So something to think about there. Um, so big takeaway from all this, if you take anything away from this webinar, pick two or three strategies. Don't try to do all of these at once. You're going to kill your, your budget. You're going to spread yourself thin. So pick two or three strategies and focus on implementing them this season. Okay, so again, if you're a new installer, something like Facebook ads, take a button, you know, part of your budget, put it into Facebook ads flyers or uh, door hangers, and then yard signs, right? And then go out there and get your Facebook ads up and running, and then go out there and start hitting neighborhoods, tagging doors with door hangers or flyers, and then put up yard signs wherever you can, okay? Great strategy to get you started. If you do that, you'll have no problem getting customers. 
Um, if you're more established and you've been doing that and now you're growing and, and it's getting, you, you know, you're spending more time op in operations, actually installing and fulfilling and stuff, then you want to think about upgrading your marketing to where now, instead of tagging doors and doing those things, you want to upgrade to postcards, every door direct mail is a great strategy for that where you can pick a neighborhood and send out a postcard campaign to them throughout the season. Facebook ads is still a great strategy for established businesses. All you can do is you just crank that budget up to where whatever you can handle. Okay. And then once you get maxed out, then you can turn it back down. Same thing, door hangers, you can have your guys start implementing a, you know, a system when they, when they go through and they go through checklists. Okay. Well, I've done this part, this part, this part before we leave, we need to go put a door hanger on each of the five doors around the house we just installed. Check, right? And then start thinking about investing in your trucks wrapped, trailers wrapped, stuff like that. If you're getting into the seven figure range like we are, like we have trucks and box trucks and trailers. So getting, getting those wrapped, getting your logo on them, it's gonna be a, a important thing to think about at that stage. And then if you're, if you're a uh, new installer, then that might just be something like getting a door magnet that goes on the door much cheaper. So, and then make sure that you guys are getting these things figured out and in place going into October. If you're a new, if you're a new company, that's going to be fine. That's kind of your deadline. You want to have it ready to go so that you can start marketing and hitting the ground running from there. If you're an established company, you probably need to think about getting that ready earlier for like for us, we get started in September. So we have the ground running, like everything's going right now. We are already setting up appointments with customers, getting them on the schedule, getting payments right now, and it's in the summer, okay? So uh, the more established you get, the bigger you get. I mean, it, instead of it being a two-month Christmas season for you, it's it's going to be like a more of a five- to six-month season, okay? Um, so the question is, is, if you implement two of those things, do you think you would be successful? And I think you would. Okay. So if you just go in, implement that and get committed, make sure that you are committed to putting this system in place, not just doing a little bit here and there. If you're getting started, like if you're just going to do $30 in ads or 30 flyers, it, it, I mean, some people pull it off, they get a customer, but it's not, it's not going to be something that's going to be repeatable. You need to get committed and say, Hey, I'm going to go ahead and run, set a budget. I'm going to run some ads. I'm going to print some flyers. I'm going to send out some postcards and that's the, that's a strategy that we're going to implement this season to grow. So uh, in closing, we've been on almost an hour now. My goal here was to really give you guys as business owners, the higher level view of, to think strategically of like what's available to see the lay of the land and how to think about your business. If you're growing, do you need to shift into something that's more, um, you know, where you offload and it's more systematic and automatic, such as, you know, direct mail and move to advertising versus trying to send out flyers all the time. If you're a beginner, these are, these are great proven strategies and examples to get you going. So my goal here was that you would be able to see this and say, hey, this is what we're implementing this summer, or I'm um, sorry, this fall, and, and then we're going to go put that into place, okay? Uh, so hopefully this is what you feel like. You feel like you got a lot of power behind you and you can just you know, unleash a floodgate of leads into your business. But we did cover a lot of material. So some of you may just feel like this, like you just got blasted with the water hose and you're not the one in control of it. We covered a ton of stuff um, and, and you might feel a little overwhelmed. So what we've done is is really what we've done is we put together this partnership program. And before I go into it, I let you know, it's a free program. Um, there's no financial obligation to sign up. Um, but, and, and we'll talk about that in a second, but it's really, I, all of this stuff I can't cover in just an hour long, 90 minute um, webinar. So I wanted to be more strategic here, but uh, we've created this program to give you all the tools that you need to grow your business. And, uh, and that's inside of our partnership program. So I'm going to kind of pull that up real quick um, just to kind of explain what's inside of it. So if you go to our website, Ashley's going to put the, um, 
the link in the chat. But if you go to our, our website, you click on the partnership program, you're gonna be able to see everything that's inside of it. So this is for Christmas light installers, whether you're an established installer or a, an experienced, or I'm sorry, established or, or a beginner, we, we've got essentially a franchise type operation program inside of this thing that you can model and implement to have a very successful, well-respected Christmas light installation company. So in this program, you're going to get things like, first of all, you're going to get priority access to our quality products. So before anybody else, you're going to get access to new quality products. You're going to get special discounts on those products. Um, we have we, we ourselves are a seven figure installer. We have trainings throughout the year. You're gonna get access and special discounts and even access to a lot of those free trainings um, throughout the year. Also, some of you bigger installers, we're willing to work with you guys where you can get exclusive one-on-one -on -one where we work with your team exclusively to just kind of get them trained up, get them you know, up to, up to snuff, so to speak. Um, you're also gonna get access to us, to myself from, from marketing, uh, Ashley and, and the crew for the operation side of things, you'll get access to Scott for his expertise. So Scott is, is the owner and operator. And uh, so you'll get access to this crew for a consultation. If you got issues, like you're able to, to, um, to get, get a hold of us, we have special partner exclusive meetings and trainings and, and all of that stuff. So all that's, you're going to, you're going to get access to for free. Um, same thing is like we have networking events. So you're gonna be able to talk with other people um, about things that they're doing or that they're seeing how the industry's changing. All of that gets, all of that good stuff, you're gonna get access to that in, in, inside of the program as well. We also have a, a network of suppliers and, and um, different um, marketing opportunities and things like that inside of it. So you'll get access to that inner circle network of our, um, we have marketing signage people. We work really hard to go out and, and work with like direct mail service providers and get them discounted rates for our, our um, partners. We work hard, we like dirt, um, dirt cheap signs. We get special discount rates for our partners through that as well. Also, you're gonna get access to all of our marketing material. So marketing material templates, flyers, um, Facebook ads, our marketing images, all the stuff that you see us use, you get access to use that for your company as well inside of our partnership program. So kind of looking at everything that we talked about today, um, the Google templates, all of that, you're going to get access to Google templates. Um, you're going to get access to the Facebook ads that we talked about, the retargeting templates, the copy, the images, everything. Um, you're going to get, we have an entire marketing swipe file of just tons of good marketing examples that have worked and been proven to work over time to give you ideas that you can model after all of that good stuff. Website template, we're working on developing uh, what we're calling the perfect Christmas light business website um, for our partners that you'll get access to that you can just plug in your logo, your images, upload that and, and have that as your website. It's both desktop and, and mobile optimized. So that's, that's going to be inside of it. Um, we also just partnered with a, uh, a SEO lead generation company for a lead ge generation program discount offer inside of our, our program. So if in, our programs are, sorry, our partners will have access and dis and get special discounts to, for our from our lead gen partners. Yeah, that was a tongue twister there. But um, anyways, our, our, our lead gen partner has a nationwide infrastructure of SEO. So um, they are generating SEO leads from across the entire nation specifically for Christmas light installation. It's something that they've been building for years that we just partnered with and they're gonna offer special discounts for our partners ex exclusively for certified light partners. Um, you're also going to get, again, we, as I mentioned before, we work hard to get special discounts with other suppliers, things like yard signs, uh, direct mail, printing services, things like that. Um, we can get you guys hooked up with uh, apparel services for uh, like vests, hats, 
shirts, things like that. Um, we, we do that stuff all the time and add that into our partnership program. So um, that's all on the partnership page. I kind of stumbled through the last ones. My, my mouth is getting dry, but if you just go to our website and go to the partnership program page, you'll be able to see everything that's involved there. Those last two things I mentioned are lead gen program and some of our special discount uh, partner networks have not been added into it yet, or at least to the page, but they're in the program. Um, but you'll be able to go there. You'll be able to see how to apply. Um, again, there's no financial cost. We do ask that you agree to make us your primary supplier for Christmas lights. Um, in the event that we can't supply it um, or we don't have it, you are still free to go out and source it from others. So it's really kind of a no-brainer no offer. You, I mean, you get tens of thousands of dollars of just benefits just from signing up alone. Um, and there's no financial cost on your part. So I, I don't think anybody else out there is offering a deal like that. But anyways, just check that out. It's our partnership program right there on our website. And with that said, Ashley, I went about five minutes yeah. over. Which is, that's fine. Are you ready for some Q&A? Because like we've got some questions. Spot. Yeah. All right. So the first question is, will this recording be available to look back on? I will answer that. Absolutely. Uh, there will be two ways you can access it. The first one is actually through the partnership uh, program webpage at the very bottom. Um, if you are interested, uh, Andrew, if you could pull up that uh, yes. partner page and scroll to the bottom. If you missed last month's, we actually have it there for you. You can go and watch that. We'll have a little section. Um, this page has a ton of great info. I hope you guys all check it out. Uh, so yeah, there's our June webinar right below that. <clears throat> We'll go ahead and upload the July webinar. That will most likely be, be done either you know today or, or tomorrow at the latest, I would say. Um, and we will also email it out for you know anybody who potentially missed it or if you came in a little bit late. Okay. Um, Tammy said, I've had questions about why does it cost the same next year, even though they are leasing the lights. I always tell them it's kind of like a party planning service. We come in, set it up, maintain it, take it down, bring it back. It's more of a service than a product. Does anybody have any other kind of way to explain this to a customer? Um, I will actually be covering that during our August 30th at 12 p.m. sales webinar. Um, but yes, honestly, Tammy, I think that's a really great way of explaining it the way I explain it because we do a leasing program as well is very very similar to that that hey I take all the burden off of you and I put it on me let me manage this for you so you don't have to worry about it you don't have to worry about if a light goes out on Christmas Eve I'll be there right you don't have to worry about putting it up in your attic I'll store it you don't have to worry about it working I'll make sure it works you just build up all the reasons and all the benefits as to why they should go go with you and pay that little bit of extra money for leasing the product it's just so much more worth it all right hopefully that answers your question um <clears throat> Andrew we got a question with Google ads is the price per click higher if a certain keyword is used in the search basically how are the clicks priced in Google ads um so in Google Ads, the the price per click will vary. It depends. It varies uh, depending on really your market. So how big your market is, your competitors, or other people trying to advertise for that same uh, keyword, and then the amount of traffic that's going to it. So all of that kind of can comes together, and they'll determine the price uh, for your market. So I can't really tell you what that is because it varies. Uh, it can range widely from a smaller town that's 100,000 to, or that's more of a mid-sized city, to like a metropolitan area where it could be a lot cheaper because there's a lot more people searching for it. Um, Andrew, uh, this question I could probably answer for you if, if you want. Um, for the ads, should we use photos? If we're new, should we take pictures of other people's work from Google? If you're new, I would say join our partnership program and you can use our images because it's free That's the and you can answer. Get access to everything. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't take pictures of other competitors in the area just because it's so, I mean, it's, 
it's so likely that other people are going to recognize it. And honestly, like what we put together in our partnership program is such a good deal. We got quality images and we're giving them to you. We're like, you know, so um, it's just, there's so much in there and so much variety and we're adding to it all the time. So that's what I, that's what I would do. So William says that sounds like it could get expensive. Like Angie's list, a lot of the same folks calling me paying for each lead and getting very few real jobs from the service. Excuse me. I don't know, William, are you talking about Facebook leads or are you talking about Google leads? If you can clarify and we will circle back to you. Yeah, and just real quick to, to what we see, and this is what I saw last year, each year is a little bit different, but um, what we see on average with the partners and the guys that I've helped out is that there's somewhere around $20 a lead on Facebook, um, some a little bit more. I've seen some closer to 10 in some markets that have done real well, and then I've seen some in more competitive markets that creep up a little bit, but at the end of the day, it, you have to look at how much you're spending. Um, make sure that you have your good follow-up and sales process, which we're going to talk about next month, and um, and see what your your ROI is. And the reality is, is if you're making an ROI that you're comfortable with, then you can do that all day. Okay. Uh, does Facebook allow for us to target based on nationality or religion? Uh, Dave is thinking of promoting for Diwali. Uh, I don't believe it does. I don't think that you can. I don't think that you can. I mean, there are some interests. So if someone is interested, like there are certain like, say, Facebook pages that get so big, like, say, um, the First Baptist Church, for example, like the national church might get so many people on that page. And at a certain point you can target really big pages that are very popular. Um, so it, it might work that way, but I don't think you can target individuals on that level. It's just more of a discriminatory issue, I think. Yeah. Uh, William also said, and honestly, <clears throat> I don't like doing advertising. <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, you'd think I've been talking for the last hour, um, uh, doesn't like to do advertising on Facebook or any other platform due to each of them having their own way they contact you. So you have to check three or four different emails or message platforms. I guess if you have a lot of employees, it could work. Now, Andrew, I believe you found a workaround for us where they can email it to, you know, a particular email or a salesperson. Yeah, so there, there are several ways you can collect leads through, let's say, Facebook. Um, well, I mean, one way, if you, if you want them all to come through the same avenue, like, for instance, say your website, and then you have your website, your know, like automation notifications that come out from there, then you can just run ads straight to your websites. When they click the ad, they go to your website. Um, one, one strategy that we see work really well on Facebook is what's called a lead form. And I think that's what you're referring to, where <clears throat> the way that Facebook initially sets it up, um, it, it goes into a lead, um, like a, a lead form tab, <clears throat> excuse me, on your Facebook page, and you have to log in to go get those leads. There are ways to be able to um, notify yourself when those come in. So for our team, they don't have to log into Facebook. It sends it straight to their email and actually sends a text to our our. Uh, main phone lets them know like hey someone just came through go ahead and call them so uh we actually have a training we'll be putting on a training more in-depth training inside of our partnership program that shows how to set that up that's also something if you're growing you want to invest in that i'm willing to talk with you about setting that up for your business excellent Initially, I thought a basic website with simple wording was the best, but I'm discovering that more information creates more citations and better rankings and search engines. How do you balance a simple website with the need for a lot of content or any other thoughts? So the, the quick answer is you don't. Um, SEO is a very, it's a very tough strategy, especially for um, an uh, industry that is seasonal and so short like Christmas light installer. So 
We've actually just partnered with the lead gen partner that has done that. They've established a massive SEO um, presence for specifically Christmas lights um, throughout the entire nation. So they can, they're generating leads from everywhere. And through our partnership um, program, you'll get special discounts with them where you can claim a territory and you can get SEO leads through them. I would recommend doing that. They got some pretty good deals on, on those things. Um, I Most of our partners, we don't spend a lot of time on SEO for Christmas lights just because it's such a short season and SEO does require a lot of content. And to stay relevant and be competitive, especially with our lead gen partners, like you're going it, to, it's a very daunting battle. So what we do is we focus on a very simple landing page. We focus on what's called direct response marketing, where we're going to go out, we're going to promote, we're going to run ads, we're going to send people to that landing page and we're going to convert. Them. Um, so we're not so much worried about getting, being the top of SEO. Um, but the reality is, is there's not a lot of Christmas light installers out there. It's not a huge industry. So if you have a decent site, even if it's a small site and you don't have a ton of information or content on your page, if you're, you have your Google, my business account set up, you're running some ads, um, you keep your site relevant, um, you'll still do pretty decent. So. Absolutely. Uh, Scott, not our Scott, a different Scott, asked, do most of you store lights for the customer? Yes, we store lights for our customers. And it looks like quite a few of you guys in here do too. So good move there. Um, do you have any recommendations for cheap door hangers? That's Amy, one of our partners. Amy, I will email you some info. Um, it just kind of depends on what your, your budgets are right now. The, the discount that we provide to our partners is through dirtcheapsigns.com, but that's strictly yard signs. Um, but there's a lot of other places out there uh, that you can you can have those made. You can actually make all your door hangers in Canva if you wanted to, uh, and then just use a simple printing a printing company. Yeah, and, and most of those, so we, we have templates inside of our partnership program. Um, so that's going to save you some cost in that. A lot of these printing services, they do offer design work, and there's usually a fee. Mm -hmm. So you can at least take some of those templates, say, hey, this is... Um, this is what we want. So we don't need the design and you can save money there. Um, also, if there is an issue where they're, maybe they use a different software or something, they usually waive their, their design fee to just reformat it to their software or their, their formatting, um, or at least cut your fee down. So but just we're said, working we're on getting those discounts for you guys in our partnership program. So All right, excellent. And the next question. Sorry, I scrolled down. All right, what if your city has a no solicitation ordinance? Uh, doesn't door hangers fall under solicitation? Uh, it probably does. Um, if that's the case, then you're you're going to have to be looking at uh, direct mail. So usually that's going to be like higher end. Um, neighborhoods, if that's the case, then it might be worth it. But you could, you know, instead you could just focus on doing some Facebook advertising for that area, drop a pin on that, that, that neighborhood, do a one mile radius, and then you can target them, everybody who lives in that area through there. So it's kind of a sneaky way of getting in front of them. I've got some quick feedback on that because we used to do a lot of that. Um, I put some notes in the system. Also, this is Scott with Certified Lights. Um, I would recommend that you check with your municipality. That's usually controls that. Each one's very different. Dallas, Fort Worth, we probably have about 30 different municipalities in the Metroplex, and each one has their own idiosyncrasies. In general, uh, if they have a no solicitation sign on their door, you can't do any solicitation. You've got to move on, including flyers. For most of the municipalities in, in Dallas, Fort Worth, but again, check yours. If there's no sign, even if they have one on the front of the neighborhood, it has to be on that door for you not to be able to solicit to that home or business. So that's ours, but check with your local municipality. 
And, and one thing to think about too is if you if you are marketing and targeting an affluent neighborhood, you do want to think about how you approach them. So you don't like if if you're targeting a high end neighborhood, they may not like you approaching them by putting a flyer on their door. So that's something just to think about. You may it may be worth it to invest and go ahead and send in a direct mail postcard. Um, Amy doesn't have. I have a question, but I would love to share this uh, this message. She said, Ashley, Scott, and the team at Certified are amazing. The partnership program is so worth your time. We've been and sent our crews to multiple trainings and cannot thank them enough for what they've done to help us support our business. So thank you so much, Amy. We definitely love you and Dave over at Brothers for sure. Uh, will any of you be at the huge convention in August? We will not be there. Um, at least I haven't seen it on my schedule. Uh, let's see here. If you figure with the sales team, how many leads can be processed a day, say 30 to 50, just to put a number on it, what is a good practice for estimating how many flyers to send out in a flyer postcard campaign to not overwhelm the sales teams? So are you asking how much can, how many, how many, how many doors can they put a flyer on? I don't know. Um, it seems like a multi-layered question of like how many yeah. cells they process because that's that's part of the follow-up of you know getting a you know in contact with somebody, sending them a quote, and, and that um, versus putting out flyers versus. Oh, she said mailing. Mailing. I think I think she's they're wanting to back into like how many do I have to put out to get thirty to fifty leads so that in general. And Andrew, you can follow up with what my thoughts are on this. They they used to say 1%. So if you put out flyers or mailers, you get 1% response. I find that to be a lot less nowadays. However, Christmas lights is different. I used to put out 50,000 door hangers a month for my pest control business. And years ago, it was probably 1%. And then it just got less and less and less until it was no longer a return on my investment. I just stopped it all together. But Christmas lights, because of the seasonality of it, because of what it is and the demand for it, you'll find if you pick the right neighborhoods, door hangers are a great, inexpensive way. Because you can, if you're just starting out and can't afford postcards or Facebook, you can literally print up some flyers and go do them yourself. You know, get your kids or family, friends, whomever you can talk into Tom Sawyer with you and tell them what a great time it's going to be to go put them out. But it's an inexpensive way to get direct uh leads on your advertising time and money so uh, it's hard to put a number to it nowadays because it's so different depending on the market or the, even the individual neighborhood uh what's nice again about the fly the door hangers is you can do it one day if you get a bunch of leads and you're overwhelming yourselves guys just stop or if you're not getting enough double up your efforts postcards a little bit different because you got to pre-plan it and send them out but you can also start and stop those so um, I would just say you've got to trial and error a little bit in your market and then get a feel for how many leads you get for how many you send out. I think this is the original question, but if it's not, it's still good information. So you can you can start to figure out your flow. If I send out 10,000 postcards, I get, you know, 50 leads. Then in general, you can start to turn on and off those that flow. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And and on the digital marketing side, and once you figure out like your cost per lead, then you you just kind of do the math. If you're generating leads at you know fifteen dollars a lead then you just however many leads you want per day just dial that up okay so uh, do you offer exclusive coachings and mentorships yes in fact i've got about five different one-on-one -on -one meetings this week where i'm going over goals for this season and all that other fun stuff that is free with the partnership program yeah also that, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I was also going to add on to that, that all of our partners too will also get um, one-on-ones with me to just kind of go over their marketing, mm -hmm. see what they're in play and just talk about what their strategy is for this season and, and uh, kind of get, just get that roadmap built out and get them pointed in the right direction. <clears throat> Absolutely. Zach said, what is a good pay structure for a salesperson? Uh, that's something more likely I'd be covering next month. Um, I'm the salesperson here for our business, and I've yet to work out a uh, a sales 
pay structure with Scott. I think it's just lumped up into my regular ginormous salary, as he likes to call it, right? Um, but we'll go over that next month because uh, it can be a little bit tricky when it comes to uh, holiday lighting. Uh, let's see here. How long does it take to be approved for the partnership program? Um, I'm usually pretty quick. Um, I know I've already gotten my inbox flooded with some, so I'm very excited to take a look at those. Uh, if you have applied for those, um, you should receive something at least by the end of the day, I would say, you know, tomorrow at the very latest, but I can usually get to them within a couple hours. Um, who is the lead gen company you have partnered with? Uh, we have partnered with our partner, right? We have a partner by the name of Warriors for Light. Um, they came to our training like last year and they've been a partner ever since. So we've been working on this Legion program for the last year and it is, uh, it's live now. So very excited to provide discounted leads. Uh, not only is it for Christmas lights, but it, you can also purchase holi uh, holiday lighting, uh, event lighting leads and landscape lighting leads if you are in those businesses. And this is just the beginning. My hopes and dreams include um, other services as well. I'd like to jump in real quickly, if you don't mind, that uh, and follow up on an earlier comment or question around Angie's list. I think they were referring to this lead program when they said, is that just like Angie's list where multiple people are bidding on it? Uh, Warriors, I think, has been with us two years now, and they have spent, as Andrew said, years developing this for themselves. They've grown their business into uh, from what was Austin to Austin, Houston, Dallas, um, added Christmas lights to their other services. So they've proven the model. We've gotten leads from them to test this before we launched it to our partners. Uh, the leads are very quality. The price is amazing. The price that you get for these leads that are pre-qualified, they have a $500 minimum uh, in the qualification process. They've got to fill out a bunch of information to get there. Uh, so once the lead comes in, it's like, three levels of, of qualification to where these people are very interested in getting Christmas lights at a minimum of $500, which means you can sell them almost whatever you want. They're not the $200, $300 uh, folks. And I used Angie's List for many years, my pest control. We were doing over $500,000 a year just in Angie's List leads back when it was Angie's List and a real true marketing company we partnered with them we went on trips because we were the biggest in the pest control industry with them um, they were an awesome company and they got bought by home advisor if you've ever used home advisor i'm 100 percent convinced they resell leads that have already been sold i'd call customers and they've already had the service done angie's this has become angie and it's just another off shoot of home advisors i would never use either of those companies you're going to be wasting your money uh utilizing those in my opinion. And I tried them. I had four sales guys in my pest control and I took it over because I didn't believe them. And sure enough, I'd call customers that the lead came in 10 seconds ago and the customer would say, I got that done last week. So this is completely different. These are qualified leads that aren't resold. They're only to one person. If they don't get followed up on, then they'll get put back out in the list. But you'll if you join our partnership and utilize this lead system. It's a great way to get uh, the best ROI on your money. Facebook's great, but you don't get that ROI. This is basically paying for a lead. Facebook, you do ads and then you you get the leads in and you got to qualify them and you've got a lead and you got to back into what it costs you per lead. Uh, I'm not trying to sell this because we don't, you know, it's not our program. It's offer that we're partnering with uh, Warriors for to give to our partners. But if you become a partner, it's a great way to to get really quality leads in your market. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Roy said, if you're new to the industry, who would you recommend reaching out to for finding installers? Roy, I'm assuming you are talking about maybe like 1099 employees. Um, if you can, if you can confirm, uh, I mean, employees is going to be a struggle that we all have, unfortunately. Um, I don't, I don't think there's any one great way of, of solving that other than starting early, you know, put all your time and energy and just never stop, right? 
Um, even if you overhire, somebody's bound to not work out, somebody's, you know, going to quit, something along those lines, you should always have somebody, um, you know, in the, in the wings for backup. Um, let's see. I love a webinar about commercial only. This has mainly been focused on houses and I do mainly commercial. We will definitely take note of that because I think that would be a great webinar for us to have. Um, we'll, I don't know about this year um, because commercial tends to start bidding pretty early in the year because um, they have to work it into their budgets. Um, you can purchase commercial and residential leads through the Warriors Legion program as well. Um, how do you transition from selling your product and installing and onto renting your product? Each market's different. That's definitely something that we're going to cover in sales. Um, I would start with, you know, whoever you have on a sale model, you know, leave them there until you can transition them. But all your new sales moving forward, put them on a lease model. Um, you know, if you've got 10, but you're, the rest of them are all 50 others are on lease, you know, it just works out. And eventually either they'll be willing to switch over or you just may have to drop them. Let's see here. I apologize if this has already been answered, but I'm on my mower and it's hard to hear. I'm just now wanting to start holiday lights and need help uh, and need all the help I can get. Does your program offer training on how to actually install the lights and all of that? And, or who do you recommend? We recommend us. We do have a training. Uh, a, we have a two day training seminar actually coming up in September on the 14th and 15th. It's our last training event of the year. So if you're looking to learn, this is the time to do that. Uh, it's not too late. I've seen people out there posting, oh, if you're not marketing in July for your Christmas light business, you, you're too late. No, you're not. <laughs> okay, get started. Even if you do five homes, you do three homes, you do 10 homes, get started. You know, you don't have to wait till next year. Join our training. It's $9.95. For, that includes two attendees, two-day training, first day's classroom. We show you all the ins and outs. That includes marketing, uh, storage. You get to walk our warehouse, all that fun stuff. And then day two, day two is legitimate in the field training, hands-on. Um, a lot of our partners have gone through it. Um, you're on the roof, fluffing wreaths, doing steak lights, all that fun stuff. Um, what is the cost per lead or does a monthly fee with Warriors for Light? It is not a monthly fee. It is a, um, let me see, I think the regular pricing for a Christmas light lead is about $60 per lead. Partners do get a discount off of that. Um, if you sign up through the partnership program, you get an extra, you get like a free bonus of $150 for leads. Um, so you pay a $400 setup fee and then you get $550 worth of leads that you can use for the season. Okay, what will and be I think the lead? I think that lead for the partners is $45, so it's a pretty significant yes. discount. Yeah, so mm -hmm. 60 to 45, that's a, that's a great price on the lead. Yeah, absolutely. And again, these are vetted leads, verified. They've provided all the information, their name, their phone number, their email address, their address. If you've been doing this, you know how hard it is in that initial conversation to get all that information up front. And it is put into a portal for you to pick if you even want to buy it. You don't automatically have to. It's on you. If, if you're full for the season, that's absolutely fine. Uh, what will be covered in September? Also, what is the best way to communicate questions that may arise? Or should I save them uh, for a weekly discussion? So I'm assuming you're talking about the training. I just went over all that. If you have any other questions, Richard, just let me know. I'm going to put my email address in the chat for everybody. If you have questions, shoot me an email. It's usually the best way to get a hold of me. I work Tuesday through Saturday. So if you don't hear from me on Monday, that's probably why. Um, but yeah, shoot me any questions that you have. Rich said that's high compared to tweaking the SEO. SEO takes a long time to, to get right, right? And for these newer guys, sometimes, you know, you just have to pay for the leads um, as, you, as you build your business up. So it is discounted. We're super excited, uh, especially for a verified lead. All right. I think we, we ran over about two minutes, which is pretty good. Um, 
Yeah, normally it's about 15 minutes over. So thank you all so much for sticking around. You've got my email address. You've got the partnership link. Uh, I will send this, uh, this recording out to everybody. Thanks so much for joining. We look forward to seeing everybody with me August 30th at 12 p.m. We will send you a link. Uh, so make sure you sign up. Take it easy, guys. Thanks Thank for coming. Thank you.